it is kind of strange because you know if you don't eat every three hours you die right you know that's that, right that's what I thought <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in Low Carb USA, San Diego, and I've just had the pleasure of listening to Dr. Jason Fung again, giving a high-spirited uh, presentation. A lot of power from the from the stage. So Thank delighted you. to meet you again, oh, Jason. Good to Always see you. Always a pleasure. Never. Always a pleasure. <laughs> now, I'm a bit worried though because um, it's been very clear from the science for many decades now that for optimum health and weight control we should eat regularly during the day and especially if you had diabetes or something you want to snack regularly to keep your blood yeah. sugar level yeah. and and given that you seem to be talking about the opposite i mean yeah. wow it's it's it, it is kind of strange because you know if you don't eat every three hours you die right you know that, that's right? what i thought <laughs> <laughs> i mean the I, entire idea I, is like simply ridiculous mm. and what's funny of course is that we talk about evidence-based medicine right we talk mm. about this all the time and where was the evidence that we need to eat every three hours or even we can't skip a few meals right mm. it doesn't make any sense and if you think about it, we do this all the time because that's the way we're built. So if you do a colonoscopy, which is now routine, mm. in uh, Toronto, we do 24 hours of fasting plus a purge, which is to get rid of all the yeah. stool so you can do a colonoscopy. So that's 24 hours of fasting. Nobody blinks an eye, right? Mm. In uh, the United States, in certain areas, they do a 48-hour fast, right, mm. for a colonoscopy, and it's routine. So mm. everybody over the age of 55 gets it. They do this 48 hour fast, 24 hour fast, and nobody blinks an eye. But then when I say that you should do it, they go, oh, you're gonna kill people, right? Mm. It's like, where's your evidence for that? In fact, there is no evidence because it's not true. None of it was actually true. Yeah, so, and, yeah and, and, and it's really ridiculous what, what people say about it. Oh, you're gonna do this, you're gonna go into starvation mode, which is again, ridiculous because the one thing that is guaranteed to put you into starvation mode is cutting your calories, right? Which is what we tell people to do all the time. So that's, uh, you know, some of what we talked about. But mm. yeah, definitely, it's it's a lot of just kind of misinformation out there. Yeah, and sarcasm aside, I obviously agree with you. But um, was there ever any evidence? I know we're saying there's not, and I've never found any. I wonder, does anyone even think there was any evidence that you should um, eat regularly and that it's good? Yeah, I don't. I think so. I think really? it all came out of when people were treating type 1 diabetics with insulin, mm. what happened is that it's very unphysiologic, right? That when you're shooting yourself up with insulin, you actually have to change your diet because the insulin is not physiologic. Your pancreas mm. gives a lot of insulin, goes up and down, up and down, quite substantially. But when you're injecting it, you can't yeah. do that every second of the day. So they said you have to kind of make it more even so that you can accommodate your insulin. But that was for type 1 diabetics. Yeah. And somehow this got translated into the fact that, hey, if type 1 diabetics do it, Everybody in the whole world should do this because mm. you know you're gonna die, right? If you don't eat every single, you know, three-hour period, right? Mm. But it, it just simply wasn't. Um, there wasn't any evidence behind it. Nobody made a conscious decision to promote this. Mm. It just kind of came about uh, that we should do this all the time. Even this whole idea of skipping breakfast, which used to be quite common, right? Mm. Let's face it. Lots of people would just drink a cup of coffee and go on their way. Um, that kind of became entrenched without a huge amount of evidence that mm. you should eat breakfast. They just kind of took it as gospel and it became what everybody mm. said, so everybody believed it to be true. Right? Yeah. That was, that, there wasn't much evidence for that either. And if you're a conspiracy person, you could say, well, it's in a lot of industry interest that breakfast's a very important meal and you eat yeah. all of what yeah. constitute breakfasts nowadays for us, which is kind of junk cereal, which yeah. is going to make you exactly. hungry by 11 a.m. Exactly. There's a yeah. lot of, um, I, there's a lot of uh, people who have interest in that, and not just breakfast, but the snack food industry yeah. as well. So if you don't eat snacks. So if you go back to the 70s when I grew up, it was three meals a day, no snacks, yeah, right? Same here, pretty. And everybody did fine, right? Mm. Nobody died, right? Because they didn't have their, uh, you know, mid-morning snack. So the problem was that the food companies, they want to sell more food. Now, if you only have three meals a day, you can only sell so much food. Mm. So you can create an entire new category with snacks, right? Yeah. Very lucrative, 
it's entirely processed, right? All food company profit, pure profit. Yeah. And you've added an extra couple of meals a day yeah. and you've made a lot more money. So though they became very influential in trying to change the kind of um, dietary habits of Americans. And unfortunately they're successful, which is why you don't see any, uh, you cannot go back and find uh, review articles about people citing the evidence that you should snack all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And it sounds so stupid, right? Mm. Oh, you should eat all the time to lose weight. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's it's like saying, true. I I wash my hands constantly because it makes them dirtier. It's like, okay, that doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. You eat all the time, you're gonna gain weight. Period. Mm. That's I just watch. And for industry, it's even better, as you say, to get a first order profit from the snacking, but then you get a great second order profit generation because all that snacking is going to cause people to become more overweight, become yeah. more hungry, and then the medicines business also has a second order because all the sickness that results. Yeah. So the whole thing is this huge virtuous circle over the last 30 years yeah. in industry's favor yeah. and completely against population health. Well, I don't think it was intentional. So first Not things, um, you know, you had all those agricultural subsidies for mm. the cheap wheat and the cheap corn. Now yeah. that was in the 70s when they thought that was a good thing, right? So make cheap in bread. Fairness, in believed, fairness, yeah. yeah. They were trying to do good, right? So they, they said, we need to lower the price of bread because people eat bread. So mm. it turned out not to be such a good thing. But there you have uh, the agricultural subsidies, which are still in place. Like, mm. uh, so that made food cheaper. But then you have this uh, kind of low fat thing, which again was not a great mm. idea. But I don't think they were malicious. I think that yeah. people, some people who eventually won, really believed it. I don't think they're trying to kill mm. people. I think they actually believed it. Unfortunately, they were the more influential people. So now you have two big things in favor of this whole low-fat sort of idea. Mm. Uh, but not only that, but now you have, you have to contend with the fact that the carbs are way cheaper than yes. anything else you can buy. Mm. So you've got, it's cheap, so that's good. It's healthy now, right? The base of the food pyramid was all mm. bread and stuff, right? Mm. And, and then you, you wound up with all these food companies which were happy to kind of step in and do this. The whole snacking thing wasn't mostly the idea of the government. It's mostly just a bad idea that kind of got, gained, mm, you know, like spun out of control. Grew, yeah. And then yeah. maybe people want to snack, so they'll be very supportive of it. If anyone is suggesting it's a good thing to do, well, that's great because I like doing that, right? Exactly. So exactly. It, it built. And now industry, I suppose, the last decade probably understand things a lot better. So now they, they have to try and maintain the way it is. And that's probably a lot of the resistance. But on yeah. the fasting, so you're kind of doing the opposite of the conventional advice, but you're getting amazing results right. without extra drugs. In fact, taking away drugs yeah. while improving people's health. So maybe yeah. a few uh, cases or histories are. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm. I see people every day, every single day. Mm. I see people, I've reduced their medications, I've taken them off insulin, mm. and some of them have completely normalized, right? So in that case, you could argue that their diabetes has completely reversed, right? Mm. Um, for example, uh, just a few weeks ago, I saw a young fellow. He had diabetes for 20 years. And uh, he was uh, oriental and he came to me and he so was on 70 units of insulin a day. Mm. And it had been gradually going up and up. So then we talked to him, we said, look, this is what we do. And he knew it because he had a friend in the program, so he knew it. Mm. And we said, we're going to have you fast. We're going to change you to a low carbohydrate diet. And it's really going to be intensive and just, you know, stick around. So within a month, we had taken him off all his diabetic medications, mm. right? So three months later, his hemoglobin A1C was 5.5%, which mm. technically is yeah. non-diabetic. Mine's 5.3. Right? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing. So a man who actually had been told he was diabetic for 20 years on insulin for about five years, mm. completely reversed within the space of three months. So all that time he was told he had diabetes, it, he didn't have to have it. 
Yeah. And then, so his sister comes to me. She says, oh, that's amazing. My brother's doing amazing. I want the same thing. She was on six medications, right? She was not on insulin, but on two or three type two diabetic medications, cholesterol, mm. blood pressure, you know, the work. The depression. usual menagerie. Uh, exactly. So within, and, and we, he, she, she, she knew the result of her brother. So she knew it worked. So she kind of threw herself into it, not mm. quite as intensively. Okay. Again, within a month. We took her off all six of her drugs. Actually, she took herself off of them, but it was the same. We said, look, if you don't need blood pressure medication, then you shouldn't be taking it. So we mm. took her off. If, you don't, if your blood sugars are normal, you should not be taking blood sugar sure. medications. So we took her off. Again, she had diabetes for five years, completely reversed within two months. So what's interesting is that diabetic patients get told this big, big, big lie. Yes. This is a chronic and progressive disease, mm -hmm. right? You've got type 2 diabetes, and guess what? You're going to have it for the rest of your life, and it's going to get worse. Yeah. It's not true. The mm -hmm. whole thing is completely reversible. And mm -hmm. that's the sad part, is that people are getting the information, mm -hmm. but it's completely wrong. And what it does is it creates in them this kind of learned helplessness yeah. that is oh yeah well my life is over i might as well give up mm. right and that's not the attitude we have our attitude is look it's a lot of hard work and you're going to do it i'm going to help you but in the end you have to do the hard work you know right? yeah and that's that's and some people won't do it and that's fine but some people choice. will it's just their mm. choice we've told them that they have a choice if they decide not to use it that's fine mm. right but what we do instead is we tell people, oh, eat 50% carbohydrate, eat less, move more. And you know that doesn't work. Mm. I know that doesn't work. Yeah, and that's why doctors, doctors don't even mm. bother giving weight loss advice. Because mm. the advice that they give, they know does not work. So mm. why give it? So In give fairness, it you can't blame the doctors not understanding the endocrinology and how it works. They know the advice they're given doesn't work and they don't know what correct advice is. In exactly. fact, in the UK, I believe there are doctors now going low carbohydrate themselves but not giving it to their patients because yeah. technically they're almost not allowed to or they don't want to be seen to say it, which yeah, is a shame. Because there's the, the official Eat Well guidelines, similar to many national guidelines, and if you go against it, then you, you risk somebody Complaining, complaining, mm. and saying that you're not uh, maintaining the standards of care, mm. which is a real problem. So I tried to get a dietitian to work with me, and even when they knew and saw the results, they wouldn't do it. They're afraid that they'd lose their license, yeah. right? So Tragedy. they simply cannot do it because there are forces that you know are kind yeah. of lined up against them that they don't want to. Um, you know, provoke on. or yeah, yeah take because, trouble. Because you know, truthfully, if they lose their license, they're not doing anybody any good either. Yeah, right? in so, fairness. In fairness. Yeah. And it's hard to be angry at them because yeah. they don't know. And that's why we try to change the conversation a little bit. It just takes a lot longer. So if you hmm. look at it, you can see the conversation has changed, right? If you look at Coca Cola sales, for example, they've been trending downward yeah. for about 10, 15 years. If you look at sales of pasta and sales of bread, they've been trending down. So clearly mm. that message is getting through. If you look at um, the term healthy fat, that was not a term anybody used 15 years ago. Fat was yeah, bad. True. It could not be healthy. But mm. now you turn around and somebody says, oh, that avocado is full of healthy fats. You should eat it. Right? Even the dietitians say that. Yeah. Right? And the oh, fish fats as the, well, yeah, particularly. The, 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 the fatty Holy fish. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's mm. healthy fat. Oh, olive oil. Oh, that's a healthy olive fat. Olive oil, yes. So it's the same thing. Mm. The, the, the tone is changing. Mm. You can see people are going lower carb, higher fat, but it's slow. It's 15 years of progress. And for example, if you look at the dietary guidelines for Americans, uh, many people don't realize that the most recent edition took out the whole cap on dietary fats, yes. right? Yeah. And uh, you talk to people, barely anybody recognized that. Right? Yeah, it was quiet enough, and uh, they took out cholesterol as well completely. Uh, <laughs> cholesterol, but, should have been. But that was a farce, because Canada, I think, for, for nearly 20 years has yeah. taken away the cholesterol. Yeah, the cholesterol, I don't know why they hung on to that. That was ridiculous, right? Yeah, but, it's bizarre uh, how slowly they move. So you're right, the environment is changing, and you know, it's moving forward. I think it'll be a long time before the whole orthodoxy, though, is fully converted. It might be 10 years or something. Yeah. But even outside of diabetics, the practice of fasting 
uh, even for a relatively metabolically healthy person. I mean, I, I myself now have one or two meals a day, and I actually, it sounds perverse, I enjoy fasting. Mm, yeah. if, if I have a particularly challenging event in the afternoon, big challenge, I will purposefully not eat from the evening before, and I'll go yeah. into it 18, 20 hours faster, because I'm sharper, I feel better. Oh, absolutely. I'm more alert. Yeah. Everything's better. Yeah. Um, so even for people who don't have metabolic issues, doing regular fasting is probably highly beneficial in oh, general. Absolutely. There's yeah. actually so many health benefits people yeah, don't realize. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for, for example, the ancient Greeks didn't fast because they had obesity. There was virtually no obesity in the ancient Greeks. Mm. But they did it because they thought that their brains worked a lot better when they're fasting. And it's absolutely true, right? Mm. When you eat a huge meal, you're just sluggish, right? Yeah. You don't want to move, you're like the right? And they call it food coma, right? Because mm. everybody knows it. Everybody knows you eat that gigantic meal and you just want to lie down on the couch, right? Mm. You're not sharp at all. So the whole point is that you can make yourself uh, gain more mental ability. You're sharper, you're quicker, you're faster by fasting. And what what it does is it gives you an option to go in there and if you need to be on your game, if you have mm. an exam or whatever it is that you want to do well at, it gives you an edge, right? And that's huge. Agree. Agree. And it's free, right? It's, it's totally free. free. A, a, a physician mm. colleague of mine, so he lost about 50 pounds, right? And he was saying that what he noticed the most, which is strange to him, was that mm. when he was fasting, he said mm. it felt like his brain was like on fire. He could do anything. Wow, his brain so he's was like really boom, 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 boom. massive yeah, benefits. He, he perceived massive benefits.